was actually cultures in Africa that was based on music and art and based on fashion. People don't think that those things can come from Africa. The album was made to give kids in the hood hope. A lot of South Africans are inspired by that message. African people are realizing that it's actually cool to be African. It's been 22 years since the end of apartheid and Nelson Mandela becoming South Africa's first ever democratic president. Though the country has been praised for its smooth transition to democracy, many inequalities created by the apartheid system still remain. In recent years, a vibrant creative scene has emerged, which is addressing some of these inequalities and includes some of the country's biggest rap artists. Most of them born after Mandela's inauguration in 94, these young rappers are reshaping the sense of identity of South Africa's youth and expressing what it means to be born free. I wanted to meet these young rap musicians and find out more about identity and hip-hop in South Africa. I'm at Kialami Terrace. It's one of the gated communities in the north of Johannesburg, where Casper Neovest, who's one of the biggest rap stars coming out of South Africa right now, has his recording studio, and he invited me today to find out a little bit more about South African hip-hop. It's like the paparazzi now at the crib now. You know it. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> so right about now, you're looking at the boss. That's the boss right there, Casper in your vest. You got Gemini. What's it all about? hip-hop in South Africa. I grew up under like a lot of Pantola guys. It's like our thugs. Grew up to Kwaito music, which is um, a genre that was formed in South Africa. A lot of our South African hip-hop is influenced by Kwaito. Um, so you were kind of promoting that culture in your music? Yes. Not kind of, like it's the influence is very heavy. Casper Nuvest is part of a new generation of successful independent rap artists whose music is all about life in the townships. His debut record, Cholofelo, was the first hip-hop album in South Africa to go platinum in 10 years, making Casper one of the country's biggest rap stars. I wanted to find out more about Casper and his come-up story, so I drove with him to his hometown, Mafi King. So what's it like when you go out on the street? Do people recognize you and get excited that you're here? If I was to walk here, it'll be cool, but if it was like a group of students standing, I wouldn't be able to pass. So we just got to Mafi Keng, and this is where Casper's from, this is where he grew up. And it's a really interesting area because a lot of creative people came from here, a lot of famous musicians, a lot of famous actors. Casper invited me over to meet his family and meet some of the kids that he grew up with. That's my guy. Casper dropped out of school to pursue a career in music when he was 16. So does Casper come back a lot? We see him once in a while. He's so busy, huh? So how did you feel when he left school as a teacher? Hey, we're fighting. <laughs> we're fighting like we were fighting. And he used to tell us, hey, I know you that you see a doctor or a lawyer here. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, but a musician. But at the end of the day, we said, I, if that's what you want, Papa, let's just support you. So are you really proud of him now? Definitely. Under apartheid, the majority of non-white South Africans were forced to live in segregated areas such as townships or the so-called homelands. The freedom young people are experiencing in South Africa today has only been a reality for a little over 20 years, giving success stories like Casper's even greater significance. People never used to see us even passing, never even to greet you. But since Casper, and after they don't, ooh, hello, Granny, hello, Granny. Oh, they didn't see us first. When Casper's home, he tries to do the simple things he used to growing up, like playing around a street soccer with his boys. This is hood football. No fucking around, you don't get these big goals. Just get a little brick you gotta hit. After getting to know Casper a bit better, 
I wanted to know more about the different scenes coming out of the townships that influenced him in his music. So I met up with him again the next day at his house in Kayalami Terrace. Mama, I made it. This was my first single that got us best video. It's called Gusheshe. The Gusheshe is like a car that thugs used to drive, the 325IS. The name comes from Akshesha, which means quick. And they would go out and rob in the suburbs and then come and celebrate their score in the hood and they would spin these cars and it would make the hood happy, you know, to see them spin these cars. So they were like role models. Do they still do that? Yeah, they still spin, but not for the same reason. Right now it's more like recreation. In the 80s, a thriving gangster culture emerged in townships which gave birth to spinning, with spinners being the hood heroes of their time. The scene revolved around the Gusheshe, a local name given to the BMW 325iS. We're in Sambisa right now and we're about to watch a spinning event take place. I met Cabelo, one of the biggest spinners in Tembisa. So how was it when Casper came out with the Gushesha video? Did that kind of uh, affect spinning? It actually improved spinning because people now do it as a sport. It's no more like back in the days where the people who do it were those thugs. Most people started enjoying to spin, seeing him on that video. There's no car that actually spins like a Gushesha. The way it moves, the things it does, you know, the looks of the car, you know became a culture in a way. Okay, I can always give you just that sound of the car and then just hear what I'm talking about, actually. Cabello can tell if a gushish is fit for spinning just by the sound it makes. So he began prepping the engine and getting the car ready to show me his best tricks. I'm a little scared. Let's go before we get overheated. It's come, good? Come, come. Oh my god. <laughs> to Cabello, the Gushesh is more than just a car. It's a lifestyle that goes way back and that he and so many others in South Africa identify with. I wanted to meet other artists whose music was influenced by life in the townships. So I went back to the studio to meet Casper's colleague, rapper and producer, Ricky Rick. So I think like people are just coming into their own right now and we're trying to like explore you know, the roots of South African music, but it's still hip hop because the attitude is hip hop. What we're trying to put in our music is like inspire kids wherever they live to come up and to be the, the hood heroes, you know what I mean? How does having grown up in townships or coming from the townships, having family there um, influence your music? The township movement is something that everyone relates to. Everybody comes from the township. The style that how the gangsters used to dress or how they used to dance, the slang. This is how they used to drive their cars or put their seat back, you know. That's always our reference. You always have the link from where you come from. The gangster era gave rise to another scene shaping life in townships, the Pansula. Original Pansulas were gangsters who became famous for a type of dance they would do by the same name. Today, Pansulas are trying to change the negative image of the scene, but many of the old customs have remained the same. We're just outside of Bunzi's house. He's one of the most famous Pansula dancers in Tembisa. And uh, he invited me in to hang out with him a bit and tell me more about Pansula dance. The word Pansula, it means like waggle like a duck. You know how the duck move? So it goes like pa, 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 pa. Long time ago, people like, they didn't understand the word Pansula. They thought when you say like you're a Pansula, like you are like a criminal and robbing people. So we were saying, no, no, Pansula is a name of dance. Uh, our uncles, they used to go to the tavern carrying knives. Hey, Papa J1, eh? You see those actions. So now we take it like we change that thing to put it like in a dance way. You see, to send a message whereby people will understand it. No, Pansula is not about the old school one. Mm -hmm. It's about the new school one. Because it's all about neatness. Because you can see me right now. I'm neat. 
I'm not clumsy, because I'm a pansula, because I love myself. Just like today, the original pansulas were all about looking good and being proud. So they would hold spontaneous dance-offs in the streets to measure who was the best dressed and who had the best moves. Even today, pansula dance-offs are common. Spending so much time in Tembisa, I began to fully understand what this movement Ricky and Casper are pushing was all about. Just like Cabello and Bunzi, Casper and Ricky are trying to break with the stigma that still today surrounds many aspects of life in the townships, and instead recognize and celebrate their heritage. They are reshaping the identity of young kids by showing them that they can be anything they want, no matter where they are from. I wanted to see Ricky and Casper in action and meet the fans they were speaking to. I'm a major league garden. The biggest music festivals in Johannesburg, and tonight Ricky Rick, Casper New West, Major League Twins, and some other surprise guests are going to perform. Who did you come here to see? I came here to see Casper. Obviously. Yeah. Why do you like him so much? And he's from the hood. I'm from the hood. So he just re he represents what where I come from. Because I'm also trying to rap, trying to get my game up. So he just shows me that there is a chance that we'll make it. Straight up. While many of the musicians in the VIP section were giving interviews, I found Ricky and Casper in a quiet corner of the parking lot reminiscing about their past. Me and Ricky met on the internet. <laughs> what do you mean you met on the internet? So I used to like send him my tapes and he started sending me beats. We met like three years later. So everything you guys met each other online and would just send each other music back and forth? Yeah, yeah. Would you guys rap on each other's tracks already? The funny thing is no. Oh, okay. He sent me beats, but I never I never made any songs on the beats. I would actually just listen to the beats and I loved them so much that I couldn't write anything. And then <laughs> I tried to write something to one of the beats and he thought it was whack. So he ended oh, up no, taking no. the beat back. He took the beat back and he put it on his album. <laughs> Sometimes these things happen. So it started on the internet, then it became a real thing. Yeah, then it became a real thing. Now it's friend. like a real thing. It's like real yeah. friends. Whether we do music together or never again, we're always going to be here riding. moment Casper and Ricky had been anticipating. 15,000 kids all together in celebration of their music and their heritage. If I was like a girl, I'd probably cry, like right now, like I'm like crying inside. It's, I'm so happy, man. It's only like two years ago when we were speaking about doing these things, like doing our own shows and giving like 
kids in the hood, like, you know, production value, you know what I mean? Like, there's some kid who just saw, like, fire on stage for the first time in his life. And for us to bring it to them in the hood, it's, it's a moment they'll cherish forever, you know? Like, when I look at it, it's like, these kids are gonna tell their kids one day, you know, there was this guy called Casper with a ponytail, and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's dope, man. I think I'm gonna be, like, the biggest artist to ever come out of Africa. That's the story I'm living. And a lot of people think I'm crazy for thinking that, you know, but it's just inside of me. This is what I think every day since I was a kid. Like, I've always thought, you know, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like a special kid. Like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. I can say a lot, man. I'm just, like, going through so much right now. Like, but, like, a summary of everything. I'm just happy, man. Who's that? That's Ricky. Oh, come in, man. Cause just shut down the party. Confetti raining. My nigga still got the mic in the hand. Give the shit. Yo, somebody give him. <laughs> hey. Yo, give it to Spike. Yeah, somebody. Hey, Spikey. We got that mic. We're taking it home. Noisy, you guys gotta go home. We got the honeys waiting for us. Don't, don't put that on. <laughs> I'm single.